Hey everyone, it's 24th of February 2022. This is David Newey and your software's product manager over at Blue Chip Infotech. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And you know, reporting to you live from Sydney here. I've always wanted to be a news presenter. Can you imagine it? It's a dreary week going forward ahead. You know, we've got a whole week of rain and there's some crazy stuff going on, like the train strikes and you know, uh, you know, stuff is in a kerfuffle. Really, can you believe it? The COVID restrictions are going to be ending on, you know, around about Friday for us. I don't know about everyone else. I've got Mr. Yasha Rakush here, the senior sales engineer over at Sofos. Mr. Yasha, how are you doing, sir? I'm good, David. I'm good. I'm uh, up here in Brisbane, and I've got to say, um, we don't have train strikes, but um, I would swap this weather for anything else because I'm looking through the window and it's nothing but clouds and rain and has been for a few days. So not the best of days, but probably a good day to have a webinar like this. <laughs> right, right. Staying indoors and, and winning prizes and learning all about software ZTNA, Zero Trust Network Access, hot off the press. So I'm really glad to hear that as well. In, in fact, if you've got the similar weather to us, I wonder how Mr. Goodman is doing uh, inside of Melbourne. But we're going to see from him soon. Uh, he's just uh, going through another call. So what we've got in store for you, everyone, we're going to start around the three minute mark, but we've got so much content. So much content in order to deliver down to you, some cool prizes, and of course, the next generation technology that's going to obliterate VPN and allow clients in order to connect to their network virtually and, and all the good jazz that comes with it, the security features and the central management. I love it. I'm so, I'm so, so excited. Uh, we are we're just going to wait a few people to trickle in. We've got 27 people right now. That's really, really awesome. I'm super stoked. Uh, you know, so uh, just kind of give it a few more moments. Make sure you stick out until the very, very end of the webinar. We've got, uh, you know, lots of prizes once again to give out to you. And if you listen carefully to Mr. Yasha's presentation on ZDNA and all the 101 business, you might be able to win some really, really cool prizes such as Apple AirPods inside of the trivia that's coming up. And of course, uh, the Apple Watch, you know, series three. So that's, that's gonna be really, really cool. Uh, we'll wait just a little bit longer but if you if you guys want to use the chat function pop in any questions while you're here pop in pop in any kind of comments so that we can address them we've got a lot of content so we'll try our very best in order to get out to you but uh you know as it goes along uh we've got free free uh, amazing presenters here in order to give you what you need okay uh so i'm gonna i'm gonna quickly say hi and get everyone uh, all, all acquainted with the chat box here hi everyone while we wait for a few people in order to join, okay? Is everyone excited? Tell me, tell me how it's going inside of your state uh, when you can. But let's swap over. Make sure everyone remember that there is a questions, uh, there is a questions box as well as a chat box. So the questions should go into the questions box, and of course, any chat or commentary that you'd like to make should go into the chat box. There's a clear distinction out there. And make sure you get used to GoToWebinar. We've got 31 people right now, and uh, just a few people trickling in, making sure that they're uh, getting in quite straight, okay? Uh, so as you can see on the screen, Sophos ZTNA, hot of the press, the newest product release, you know, user licenses, uh, about to replace a VPN and just get it out the window. That's that's what we need right now because remote work is rampant, it's huge, and of course I won't steal Mr. Yasha's thunder, but uh, he's gonna give us, he's the man, the legend, is gonna give us all we need to know, okay? So uh, it's just around the four minute mark right now. Let's get into it. Uh, the agenda right now, as you've already heard, if you've just joined, okay, it's been, first up, it's Yasha Rakush from Sophos to give us the lowdown, you know, 101 on ZTNA and how everyone can benefit, of course, with Q&A right after, right after, just so that we can answer any burning questions you've got, pop them into the questions chat, just like I said, for anyone who's just joining, and there will be quiz time, of course, right after that hosted through Crowdper website. It's it's a trivia website. You know, if you've probably seen um, Kahoot, for example, uh, so there uh, will be a, a separate link inside of the chat box. Make sure that you click on that as uh, when, it, when it pops up. So there will be a time to do that. We'll be putting it in the chat box once again. The major prize is Apple AirPods. So for the smartest person with the biggest brains inside of this webinar, make sure you go, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be in the running to get that. There are minor prizes for the runners up. There's five Amazon gift vouchers for anyone who's willing to participate. So learn something today, get a question right, and you could get yourself lucky, okay? Then of course, to finish it off, we have our lucky draw wheel spin. Everyone's really, really familiar with that, at least from now on, if you've joined us in the past. That's uh, for anyone who's attended to the very end, stuck around, and we're gonna thank you with one lucky prize, an Apple Watch. 
everyone's got the chance to win that. Of course, you will have to be there. So don't log off and go and okay, take lunch or walk your dog simply because uh, you will need to shout out somewhere inside of the chat box in order to get, uh, you know, that to claim that prize when we spin that lucky wheel. All right, so since there's so much content, yeah, and, and there's, uh, there's a lot to do and there's a lot to take on. Uh, and if we go through a little bit over time, we're, we really are sorry, but we want to make sure we answer all those questions, get all that content, all those prizes out there today, uh, especially uh, since uh, it's, a, it's a fine day for it. Okay, so um, without further ado, Zero Trust Network Access, Sofa ZTNA, I am going to give the presenter over to Mr. Yasharakush in order to... Uh, give his side of the presentation, the one-on-one, -on -one, the good old lowdown. Sir, it's all up Thank you very much, sir. Um, what I'll do is I'll turn off my camera for this part so that you guys don't you know, have to look at me while we're going through the slides. Uh, like David said, please feel free to drop any questions in the questions box. Um, we'll try to answer some of them live uh, after the end of the session, uh, but we'll also make sure that all of the questions get answered after the webinar, because I would imagine there might be more than we are able to uh, answer live. So without further ado, um, Zero Trust Network Access. So one of the questions that popped up, and I'm actually going to address that because it is it is kind of an important, yes, the technology or the term is not new. Um, the Zero Trust Network Access terminology has been used for years, but it never really been defined or it never really found a place in, in, in IT in, in how it's going to be used. And that's probably because the networks as we know them were, were fairly fairly traditional, right? And a traditional network, what we all know and love or love to hate over the last 10, 15 years is something like this. You have a very secure corporate network where perimeter is well-defined. There are firewalls around it. Um, there are locks on doors. There is physical security and applications are hosted either in your data center and now more and more move to the cloud. And the way you let people from outside access those is traditional VPNs, which absolutely you know serve a purpose and have served the purpose and 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 still will and still do uh, but things have changed right the things have changed probably in the last well you know for, for for lack of a better reason because of the pandemic in the last uh, two years things have dramatically changed on what the network is the the perimeter has been redefined where most workers are remote and if, even if not most workers a large quantity of workers is remote but even more so not every worker is you know your own personal employee it's it's somebody that you work with somebody that you contract have a contractual relationship with that still has to provide a service uh, the perimeter is blended the perimeter isn't well defined it's not a strict there's no there's no uh, fencing you can put around the perimeter because it is literally anywhere in the world but the application access is just as essential as it was two years ago so now we're talking a concept of a branch office of one that's what we're dealing with now you know when we talk either work from home or in 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 my case because i've been doing work from home for the last two years it's more of like living at work because my my home is my work and has been my work for the last two years so it's a bit of a blended situation and that's what a lot of us if not most of us and our customers are dealing with um, and we'll we'll be dealing in, in in the near future so what does an office of one look like well that like this right um, every window on this screen is potentially an office in fact this could be different offices the same offices all of these people could be an office that all of a sudden needs to have access to your applications and your services and you have to find a way to do that securely uh, funny enough um, this will not surprise anybody the VPN adoption in 2020 has exploded. A good example was we do track how many people use our VPN client called the Sophos Connect. And in 2020, the downloads went up tenfold. Um, there is not a product of Sophos that would have a growth of tenfold in anything we've ever released in our history. So it kind of shows that it just exploded, adds did some applications. And you know, if any of us had a crystal ball and could spin time back to July 2019, we'd probably just put some money in Teams and Zoom and we wouldn't have to attend meetings like this because we'd be sitting somewhere in, in Bali or Fiji and just enjoying ourselves drinking mojitos or any other cocktails of your choice. But you know, um, that's 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 the thing about hindsight. You don't know what's happening. Uh, Forrester, which uh, would be one of the top analyst companies out there, is saying that the decision makers were not prepared. Um, and I can attest to that before joining Sophos, I was with a partner. I did a lot of consulting and probably the last six months before I left that company, 
all I ended up doing was getting people capable of doing remote work with whatever tools, whatever they had available from just opening an RDP session publicly on internet, which is horrible, but some people didn't have any other facilities, didn't have any other features, didn't have any other components to do it differently. And um, I, I'm going to also add that about 80% of those firms, they said that zero trust security architecture is is the place to go, right? You, you, you don't know what, you, what, what you're going to get into your network. So you go from an approach, I don't trust anybody. They need to validate themselves and the tools they're using. And according to that, I will give them... I will give them some sort of access which is going to be dynamic and it's going to change based on their posture. And the challenges of VPN are pretty, pretty, you know, pretty known. It's it's very much an all or nothing approach. Um, whether we're talking IPsec clients or SSL or even clientless, the access is usually pretty broad. We're talking, you know, network type rules with a bit of with a bit of filtering on top. When you allow access to a server, it's sometimes very hard to allow access to just an application if that application shares a port with an upper application, if we're talking web servers, et cetera. And that also allows lateral movement much easier because of the level of access you're, you're giving to, to, to the people that, that, that have those access. Uh, devices that are used, there are tools that do some sort of compliance, but it's not simple. You have to use proprietary tools, you have to use proprietary agents, you have to use proprietary policies, and you have to maintain them all the time, which kind of makes it challenging and frustrating for both users and IT departments. From IT department standpoint, so for partners like yourself, it's not the easiest to set up sometimes, right? I'm going to say most of the times, but let's just say with, with sometimes it's not the easiest to set up and then even decommission if, if people move on to, to another organization and can become a bit challenging to use. You know, people need to spin up an agent or if an agent is always on, it might interfere with their local network if they have local network resources. So it becomes a bit of a problem of, of how to manage this when people are starting to work remotely, which is where Zero Trust kind of sort of steps in and, and, and provides some of the answers to those problems. The first one is, I'm not going to trust anything or I'm going to trust nothing and I will verify everything, which means I will have a user-centric and application-based authentication and access. So user A, which is authenticated, will have access to an application under certain conditions. I will also continuously control and analyze their posture and their security level. I do recognize that there is no inside of the network the device is my network. Every device that has access to my environment has to be considered to be part of my network because of what it can bring in. And it's 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 clear to know that security policies should be adaptable, should be dynamic. If my access to, at this point in time is secure because my machine is clean, but then while I'm doing work, I happen to have a Chrome window open, I download the malware in the back end, my, my devices need to know that. My security policies need to change and need to adapt and need to secure the access or remove the access, if nothing else, at least temporarily, so that I can make sure that when, this, when the situation changes, when the device is again back clean, I get the access without too much interference or hassle to the user. So we do that by obviously always verifying the user. And in that space, verifying the user, there is not much difference between VPN and ZTNA. Verifying the user means authenticating somehow. Uh, one of the main differences is, though, that the verifications of users with ZTNA can be passed on to any single sign-on applications. So in, in, in a lot of cases, if your backend systems are using the same identity mechanisms as your ZTNA mechanism, then that authentication tokens can be passed on and you don't have to double authenticate to web servers, to applications, etc. I will always continuously validate the device, and by that I will limit access and privilege. And to be honest, this slide should have a returning arrow back to the beginning because this is a loop. You know, this is not a finite decision. Once you get access and privilege, then that's it. It it, it changes based on on what happens with you during a period of time. It is not an answer to everything. And you need to understand that when you talk to your customers, that you don't go in guns blazing and try to address their needs with ZTNA because it doesn't suit every need. So this is kind of a diagram, um, and I'm going to say maybe pay a bit of attention because I'm not saying that it will be or it won't be, but there might be a question associated with this particular slide. 
but um, there are places where we're going to say ZTNA does not have a role. The, the the most important one is if an organization leaves off, you know, SaaS applications such as Salesforce, Office 365. In those cases, ZTNA doesn't really play a part. We have cloud access service brokers that Sophos doesn't even offer, so I'm not pitching another product from Sophos. I'm just being honest to tell you. In those cases, I would not be having a ZTNA conversation. I would identify that is how you operate. Cool, let's have a different conversation. When we are talking internal applications that are both you know, on premises and in the cloud, which in reality, most organizations to some extent will have that kind of a setup, that is the sweet spot for ZTNA. If you have a very traditional organization that still keeps all the servers on premises, um, everything is contained with a perimeter, yes, a VPN is a solution that still plays a role. Uh, one, one, one main advantage of ZTNA is the simplicity of setup. And I'll, I'll talk about that uh, a bit um, later in one of the slides. And if there is a um, customer that potentially just offers public web servers, um, not really limiting the users that have access to those servers, so they don't really identify users. In that case, neither of the three options I've sh shown you so far would be suitable. You're looking at web application firewalls to, to address that. So how does Zero Trust Network Access work? Well, we see it as a new way for mostly remote work to, workers to access applications. Um, the identity and device, it, it, it becomes a software-defined parameter. So your device and the tools that you're using essentially become your access type. So if the device is compliant, if you are compliant, you can have access to A, B, C. If you move to another device, you are still compliant. The device is not, so I'm going to take some of the access away from you until you get to a compliant device. So it's not a binary approach. It's not an on and off. It's not Yasha has access today, Yasha will have access forever. It's Yasha with this device doing this type of work has, has access, but then I travel for work and I'm in a... Um, in a hotel on a public kiosk, but I still need to do some work-related stuff and my laptop is out of battery or, you know, um, worst case scenario, I've lost it at the airport um, and I need to do something, I still can. Just limitations apply. Uh, the policies that you have to adhere to will always be applied before you get access to applications based on the context that I've just spoken, but they're also always rechecked. So they're periodically rechecked to see if your status changes, the agent can notify the ZTNA central and say, hey, this is this is this has changed. Does access change based on the changes on the devices and the user? And that sort of you know travels back and, and changes the policies. Uh, what are the benefits? Well the benefits that the access is both for public and private applications. And when I say any user or any device, that's exactly what I mean. Any user means uh, anybody that can authenticate. So it doesn't mean any user, non-authenticated users will not have access. You still have to authenticate. But the user does not have to be your employee. You just have to give uh, give them a ability to, uh, to authenticate against your identity provider. Uh, at the moment, um, our product supports uh, Active Directory and Okta as the identity providers because these are, you know, the most commonly used uh, identity providers. And when I say AD, I'm talking because you're AD in this case. Um, if you have a group in AD that is just for third party access, that is enough to give access to applications. Uh, we don't care where it's coming from, um, and you can have multiple gateways and everything is managed essentially through DNS records. Once you set up a gateway and you want to deploy a new applications, all you do is you create a new DNS record, attach a resource, and nothing needs to happen on, on the client or the end user end. They're just notified, there's a new application for you, you have permission, please use it, uh, which makes it a bit easier to deploy, right? Changes to your organization don't necessarily need to mean a nightmare for your users because you do the changes in a centralized environment and the policies automatically update users with access. It does, minimal, uh, it does minimize lateral movement because it's a very specific access to an application. It's not a network level access to a server. Uh, however, that is also possible with the use of an agent and there is no implicit trust. It doesn't mean Yasha is trusted because he's Yasha. It's always conditional uh, trust based on who I am at any point, any given time. 
Alrighty, how do we do it? I'm sure you've heard ZTNA being done by you know others as well. We're not the only ones that have this this solution or this product on the market. Why we think ours is cool? Couple of couple of reasons. Um, one is that it's managed through Software Central. Software Central is what most of you know, or I'm going to assume that most of you know, which means you already have the tool. Um, the Trust Engine is part of Software Central. It gives you both private and public access. By private, I mean the gateway can be deployed as part of a hypervisor on premises or as part of a virtual machine in AWS. Um, we will have other, um, I'm, I'm going to say, other hypervisors and other cloud uh, providers as part of our gateway offering, but at the moment, those are the two. So you can have a gateway in a cloud, you can have a gateway in a data center, and then you manage access with DNS records. The client doesn't need to know which gateway do I need to go to. They just put in hr.company.gov.qld and that's all they need to know they need a dns record they know their usernames because it's the same identity they use when they're in the office and off they go um, there are two types of access i've mentioned that there is a client and a clientless access so a clientless access is available for any application that can, can present itself as a web application which in all honesty majority of tools these days are web applications but there are still tools where you don't want to have web application or it's not enough for admins uh, in in this webinar ssh or any tcp session on a non-standard port would not be would not be available through a clientless access so we have a client and client is part of our endpoint solution so if somebody's using intercept x adding a client is literally a check mark in software central um, i've tested this yesterday just to have a better idea of how long it takes for the client to actually deploy it once i enable ZTNA. i think it took under five minutes after i've enabled it on a couple of machines in my lab to show up as enabled and compliant so it doesn't take much and i had no knowledge there was no requirement for restart all of a sudden there was just another section when i had the client open that said hey you you now also have this feature installed and you can do client type access and once you have a client um, anything that does tcp or udp can be passed through so in my personal case i have removed vpn access entirely for my home access and at home i've got a nas box i've got security cameras i've got um, uh, linux servers that i ssh into i've got firewalls switches wireless controllers that i use non-standard ssl ports to access to so i have a combination of client and clientless access and i also have a couple of um, let's say public servers which are essentially user portals because um, um, I, I, my family uses my my software licenses so that they can change their passwords they can enroll their mobile devices and they can do that without having an agent so i'm i've pretty much taken away the entire vpn requirement and like i said it depends on having a gateway which is a a software solution it's it's either based for your hypervisor or for cloud um, and it does terminate a session if the health changes. And I've tried that. I've deployed a non-malicious malware just to get a change of my of my endpoint status from green to orange. And it said, sorry, you, you need to be green to access the file server. So you're, you're gone. Uh, and all of this is logged and all of the data is shared with Software Central. So you have one place where you can I guess report on what's happening with 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 your ZTNA or with remote access from from a perspective of bandwidth, application uses, uh, authentication or failed authentication, etc. Uh, with that, I will uh, give the give this back to to David, and we'll go into the I guess Q and A section. Awesome, Yasha. No, thank you so much for that, man. That was absolutely brilliant. Uh, good, good 101 on ZTNA. There are a few questions that we've just got now. And if anyone has any questions, now is the time to address them. What I'm going to do here is just get my screen up and going so we get the Q&A slides right about now. And of course, my lovely face right here. I want to turn on my camera. Hello, everyone. Once again, it's great to see you. Uh, we've got one question here, Yasha, if you don't mind if I ask. It's from Melina. Uh, she has asked, so does, in, does ZTNA, in fact, uh, in effect, replace Okta if you're using Azure? Um, it, it, that, that, that's, that's an interesting question. So ZTNA is not an authentication mechanism. 
right? Part of the configuration of ZTNA is selecting your authentication or identity provider of choice. At the moment, we support identity provider being either Azure AD or Okta. So if you have Okta, you can tell ZTNA Gateway, please authenticate users against Okta. If you prefer Azure AD, you can do that. Now, keep in mind that it's not one or the other. Um, I personally only have Azure AD, but if I had Okta, I could say Gateway 1, 2, and 3 are going to authenticate against Okta. Gateways 4, 5, and 6 are going to authenticate against Azure AD. So you can have multiple identity providers based on who you're going to give access to. And they all of those gateways can serve the same resources, but with different conditions. So it can become very complex, but... Um, I'm going to say that it, it, to start with, it's a very simple setup, but you can make it very relevant to your environment. Right, right. No, no, awesome. No, thanks for that, Yasha. Uh, how, how does that go, Melina? Did you, did you feel? Okay, great. That seems like it answered your question. I'm very, very grateful for that. Uh, you know, next up, we have another question from Phil. Uh, Phil Delarue. Uh, is there any tools, guides, or documentation we can help to migrate Sophos Connect users to ZTNA, Yasha? Good question. Um, I'm I'm gonna probably say like this. There is a very good deployment guide for ZTNA. It's not a migration guide, and the reason why it's not a migration because ZTNA does not replace everything Sophos Connect does. So we're not arrogant to say take away Sophos Connect, put in ZTNA, and everything you've had in Sophos Connect is gonna work because there are certain things that clients are just better for as i've shown you in one of the slides so when it comes to that deployment guy i've said that to every partner every customer i've spoken with in terms of ZTNA is the guide should be followed step by step there are a few things where i've made a mistake when i've read them and thought to myself i've done this in the past i know better i'll do this later and realize that that was not the right thing to do there is a reason why we put what we put a guide the way that it is. Um, it explains how you do the identity provider, how you do the gateway. So in terms of requirements to set up ZTNA, I haven't shown that on a slide, but let me just put paint a picture of what is needed to have a successful ZTNA deployment. You need to have a domain because that domain needs to be public because like I said, everything is done based on DNS. Because this is a secure access, that domain needs to have a certificate attached to it. And because you're using multiple DNS records for that domain, the certificates needs to be a wildcard certificate. To put in perspective, I'm using Let's Encrypt, which is a free certificate at home. So I didn't pay for any of this. I'm using Azure as my AD, as my identity provider, because it's free. I get a free license because if you sign up for Azure, AD is a free offering. I use Google as a domain provider because, again, the domain cost me, I don't think, a, a two cups of coffee in Brisbane or something like that. It's, it's ridiculously cheap. And that is essentially all you need. And then you, you decide whether the gateway is going to be deployed in your own hypervisor or in the cloud or a combination of both. But the requirements are certificate, domain, and owning a DNS you know, server where you can manage DNS records. Right, Ryan. Awesome. No, thank you for that, Yasha. Um, Paul, you're uh, you're welcome to. Uh, sorry, Phil, you're you're welcome to tell us if you've uh, we've answered the question. But you know, for now, while we move on, we've got one from S uh, J. S J asks, uh, does Azure AD uh, authentication require Azure Active Directory like the UTM authentication does? Yes. That's a, that's a simple answer. Is yes, it does. Yes. Great. Yeah. That's, yes, there we go. Uh, SJ, no, you, no, yeah. go no, no, no point in, in, in expanding on that just to buffer time. But yes, you need you need Active Directory where you have users and groups. Um, it, it synchronizes the users and groups with Software Central, um, and then you assign permissions based on those groups. So in my case, I have two ZTNA dedicated group. One is called privileged, one is called privileged, and then I just drop users in those groups. So I don't never deal with a specified user. I deal with AD groups and I give permissions awesome. to AD groups, which also means much, much less admin overhead to give permissions. Awesome, awesome. No, thank you for that, Yasha. Uh, in that case, SJ, if you have anything further, you're more than welcome to follow up uh, after after the schedule. Uh, going on to the next question then, thank you, Yasha. Uh, from Shalvin, uh, we've got, sorry, uh, I'm a bit confused about how it differs, uh, sorry, it differs from VPN. Is it is still allowing network access from a different laptop, per se? Yeah, so, um, when we when we talk VPNs and mention the term network access, it's usually very broad, right? You say I'm going to let 
full access to this network, which is 255, 253 computers potentially. And I don't have much control other than I've given permission and I hope that David that I've given permission to has really authenticated with his user and nobody has stolen his user. When I get network access to a server or with, with VPN, the lateral movement is fairly easy. If I get privilege escalation on that server, nothing is stopping me to move laterally from that laptop itself directly. With ZDNA, it's, um, it's more of an on-demand connection to a specific resource. So I don't give you, I, you can get network level access because when you specify permissions, you list ports. So in my case, as an example, I have one server in my environment that is my DNS, my SSH, my SSL, and something else proprietary. So I allow those four ports full access with no restriction. But I could have said, I can only get to this DNS record, to this FQDN on that server. So you have the ability to do both, which is what VPN doesn't really offer you. It, it can only be full access or no access. Uh, ZTNA still allows you a fairly broad access if you want to, but at the same time, you have a massive ability to reduce your, your threat footprint. Right. No, awesome. Very informative. Thank you, Jasha. Full access or no access? Got it right there. Uh, we've got an, another uh, question here from Melina. Is it device specific or user specific? Both, essentially. Right. Um, so when, when we say device specific, if you want to use agent, the agent can be used on any device that we support our endpoint agent on, which is Windows from 7 to 10 and Mac Mac units. So this is, and it's going to come as a mobile solution as well in the near future, but let's not talk about how near that future is. So it can be specific to a device, right? You can say it has to be agent type access, which means you have to have an endpoint agent and the device is going to be monitored. It needs to be a specific health. At the same time, an, another layer on top is authenticating the user. This is where ZTNA that I mentioned before is I'm authenticating the device and the user every time. The level of authentication is up to me. I can be very loose with my authentication of devices. I can just say, I'm going to let Yasha access this resource with any device, but if he wants to access this resource as an admin level, he needs to have a device that I trust. So it, it's essentially the answer is it, it's specific to both or it can be specific to both. Right. So either or both, no, all good, all good. Thank you, Yasha. Uh, the next question in that case comes from Tony Cosma. Uh, rather, no, actually it's from SJ again, so I do apologize for skipping one. SJ uh, asks, uh, when using Azure AD, does it automatically sign in using Azure credential in the PC or does user have to re-enter? So if, if your backend systems um, are configured with the same identity provider, the single sign-on does work. So it passes on authentication, so you don't have to re-authenticate. I don't have a setup like that because I my, my home network is a bit simpler, but um, we do have, and I can we can have a, a separate discussion with um, and a separate demo for any one of you if you wanted to see this in in person and live, and I can I can show that to any one of you. We do have a setup where we can show you how single sign-on works with Microsoft credential being passed on to the backend web application, so I don't have to re-authenticate twice. It actually pops on the window and says, "I've taken your credentials. Here is the access." Awesome, awesome. No, thank you, Yasha, for that. Um, yeah, SJ, you're more than welcome to uh, let us know if that answered your question. The next one is from Tony, so we're coming up once again to Tony. Uh, Tony Cosma asks, in some cases, remote users need to browse the internet from behind the office IP. Is ZTNA a good solution for this? I that's 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 an interesting question. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't pitch ZTNA for browsing the internet. Right. This goes back to this goes back to one of the early slides where I said there is a place for ZTNA and it's not for every flavor. So browsing the internet, let's say that you browse business applications. If you're just browsing internet for fun, that is not a conversation for secure access and controlled access. This is a web filtering policy discussion. But if you're accessing resources that are corporate resources but on the internet from the office, I would say a better conversation would be around something like cloud access service broker rather than the VPN. You are already in perimeter when you're in an office, so there are other methods of control that you would have enforced upon you, such as firewalls, web proxies, etc., before you get to the internet. I would say ZTNA probably doesn't have the best story in that space. 
No, absolutely understandable. So not in that particular instance, but what about, uh, Tony continues with, what about for uh, mapped drives? How does it work for the user if the user is uh, home? Same same answer most likely, or would you like to explain? No, 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 no. I've, I'm, I've actually used that uh, setup myself. So I have, um, I've got a Linux server that supports, uh, supports SMB protocol, which is just a file sharing protocol to simplify it. Um, and I use DNS records to get to it. So I open Windows Explorer, I do backslash backslash URL of my server and it opens the drive and I can map that drive as well. And it shows up as one of my mounted drives. So it works seamlessly. I, I think probably the one main difference is that um, sometimes or a lot of the times organizations have different domain names for internal access versus external access so you have to educate users if that is the case that when they're at home they can't access the internal name that they're used to or internal ip addresses but that is a one-time education a, a good deployment would also include here are the bookmarks that were given to you just save these and click on those when you when you try to access you know remote desktop when you're trying to access file servers and things like that so uh, all of this can be done as part of the successful deployment got it awesome no thank you yasha and i hope that answers your question uh tony we've got uh just another one keeping aware of time uh, just so that uh, uh, we can move on don't worry we'll get these questions if you have any other questions afterwards feel free to keep putting in the q a if we have time at the end we'll definitely address them uh the next one comes from melina once again she says oh, so would i need to implement condition access or can i just use a ztna um when you, you're talking conditional access you're probably talking azure ad conditional access right so Yes, you can. It's it's up to you. So I, the way that our uh, guide is structured, it says, how do you set up the identity provider to be operational? How restrictive do you want to be in that identity provider is up to you. I don't use conditional access because it's my lab and I, I'm not that specific, but it does not prevent me to add conditions to the identity provider in the backend. You can just use ZTNA and you just can have username, password, and nothing else is needed. And you use the policies in ZTNA to add additional conditions, but not authentication conditions because you're authenticated against a third party. So again, Marlena, you can go very specific, very granular, and very complex. I would also say don't. Make it simple and build up from there. If there is an actual need for conditional access because that's what the organization wants, feel free to use it. It's not a requirement. Awesome, okay, not a requirement. I absolutely understand. Uh, we, we do have uh, one more question from Phil uh, and his uh, follow-on question is, does the requirement for Azure AD include the use of on-premise AD with uh, Azure Active Directory Connect, uh, you know, federated uh, Active Directory? You probably understand that way more than I do. <laughs> Yeah, so if you if you have a hybrid setup where you have a local AD and, Azure, and connect to the Azure, then yes, the Azure AD can still provide can still be used as an identity provider, but you have to have AD Connect. Yes. No problem. Okay, once again, uh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, just keeping track of time real quick, simply so that uh, we can, you know, get, uh, get on the schedule and some exciting things. We'll have a little bit more time at the end. So this is probably the last question for now. I'll, I'll call it uh, simply so that we can uh, go forward. Uh, once I connect to ZDNA, can I still browse the internet, meaning split tunnel that comes from Renato? Ah, ha. all right. Um... Renato, I'm going to say this, right? A split tunnel is a term that we all know from VPN, which is I'm going to go to the internet, for my local link. This is not it. This is the exact opposite. This is by default, I'm going to use my own link and only what is recognized because I'm using DNS records that is actually pointing to the gateway. That's going to go to a ZTN. So by default, ZTN, ZTNA will not send things to the gateway. There is no default route, there is no changes. It says, when I go to the specific C name or A name that record that I have that happens to point to a gateway, ZTNA, either the client or the client list, depending on the access, is gonna say there needs to be some level of authentication. So yes, you can always, well, not you can always, by default, your internet browsing is gonna go to your local link and it would have nothing to do with any VPN controls being set on top of it. Awesome, awesome. No, thank you, Nasha. The direct opposite, got it. Uh, and, you know, we got one final question. This one's a quick one, so I might as well ask it now while we still have just a minute left. Uh, and this sure. comes from SJ again. Can the licensing be supplied via MSP Flex program? I don't, I don't have that answer, I'm sorry. 
because we've we've just recently released this. So let's let's get back to you on that one. Um, I've, I've, I think it's been introduced in MSP Flex, uh, but we'll get back to you with with the yeah. definitive answer on that one. Sorry. Uh, yeah, SJ, we just got a, a comment coming in from one of the senior product managers, Captain Goodman. Captain, uh, you know, he has just commented at the last second, and he's just said that it will probably be after April, but we will reach out to you directly after personally, just so that we can make sure to get uh, specific timeframes. The NZMSP team is definitely uh, super responsive and awesome, uh, so they will be able to help with that. And we would like to know as well, of course, everyone's waiting on the MSP Flex program. Um, you know, that ends our Q&A section for now. I hope it helped uh, a lot of uh, people. If you've got, uh, we'll try to answer these questions offline uh, as well if you've got any others or of course after the webinar um, just so that we can stay on a bit if you've got time either way uh, we've got Captain Goodman uh, Captain Matt Goodman the senior product manager over here uh, Blue Chip Infotech uh, here to host the quiz webinar so uh, Captain if you want to uh, you know get on camera introduce yourself and and uh, let's uh, uh, let's get cracking on some awesome trivia everyone please check the chat box when uh, Mr. Matt Goodman uh, puts in the link to a crowd per so that link will be coming uh, very shortly let's uh, switch the slides right here and of course uh, the prize lineup as you guys already know is uh, the Apple AirPods so make sure you stay around uh, for that there is a lucky draw afterwards as well but five runner-ups inside of this trivia will be able to win a $20 Amazon gift voucher as well so you know lots of winners today let's get cracking ladies and gentlemen uh, Mr. M Mr. Matt Goodman Thanks, Dave. Thanks, uh, Yasser. Um, just bring it up on screen rather than putting in uh, in chat here. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of uh, trivia. Uh, so here we have uh, something you can pull up on your phone. Um, what we want you to do is uh, register for the game. i uh, got five little questions. Um, there's some points there and um, we'll get that cracking. So you can either scan the QR code or go to HTTPS crowd.live forward slash uh, and just we'll put in the, the NWTFR code there. Um, and just register with your first name and your last initial um, so we can track you and we can actually give the prizes to you. Uh, we don't want to uh, let prizes go, go missing. Duh. We'll just give a few minutes for uh, for everyone in order to to come into that. The QR code is on the screen. Of course, you can click on the link as well. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try to go in as well. I won't be participating, but it's gonna be fun to see what the questions are. Once again, everyone, just uh, type your uh, first name and the initial of your last name. In my case, it'd be David N or Matt G or Yasha R. That's it. So uh, yeah, we've got um, we've got 18 people, 24 in there. Uh, what are we uh, What are we giving away today? What's the uh, if we can remind everyone? What's, uh... Some Apple AirPods, Matt. Some Apple AirPods. Uh, some some juicy, uh, good good quality audio and wi super wireless. Um, you know the true wireless uh, earbuds uh, that you you guys are. Uh, uh, all need for especially, uh, you know, walking around after COVID ends. Uh, hopefully, we've been saying that for three years, but here we are. Um, Let's see how many how many people are inside of the uh, got, the game uh, now. Got Twenty nine. We'll uh, we'll give um. Sort of, we'll do uh, just a little seconds. bit more, I guess. Yep. Yeah. A few more seconds. We'll go to uh, yeah, yeah, fifteen more seconds. Some... Yep. All right. Now you own some Apple AirPods, right? Are they good? Are you asking me? Both of you guys. What do you own, Yasha? What what do, what's your prime audio choice? Oh, it's a, it's it's not AirPods. I'm I like I like my headphones, big and yeah. bulky, so that I look oh. funny when I walk around with them. <laughs> I won't I won't participate because with my luck, I I don't want to steal potentially our AirPods from somebody more deserving, which is pretty much everybody <laughs> in this webinar. Oh, that's right. I'll be at the bottom of the leaderboard just try, trying to see the questions here. Uh, but all right, yeah. I think we're good, uh, Dave. So uh, let's. Uh kick it off awesome awesome hey guys, you're going to, uh, yeah it's a game of uh who the quickest answer and the most correct answer gets you points uh and then it's going to be the the top winners at the uh the end so uh we're going to do a countdown i'll bring up the first question um and let's uh let's kick it off you'll also see it on your mobile device as well so um yeah all multi-choice um choose the best answer or answers
right, what management console is ZTNA managed from, deployed and managed from? All right, let's have a look at, uh, correct answer here was Sophos Central. Uh, and let's have a look at the, uh, what people answered. So we've got some for Sophos Sum, uh, so the SCMC, uh, we made that one up earlier today. A few for the, the ZTNA client, the console and Sum as well. So let's jump on to the next question. Oh, let's look at the, the leaderboard. Um, so we've got uh, the hairy wombat uh, leading the, uh, the charge. Go wombat, go the wombat. Okay, so and, we uh, won't be able to know who you are if you win this, but I hope you I hope you go really well with that with that name out there in the field. So or or, or miss uh, I don't it could be anyone, but really. Uh, but yeah, on to the next question, Matt. Let's go. All right, on to the next question. ZTNA will allow a compromised device to access corporate applications and data. Ooh. Ooh, this one's. Oh my guys, have you been listening? This is this is a. If, if this is not a hundred percent answer, then <laughs> we, we we've failed in this webinar. <laughs> yeah, sure. We're gonna have a we're gonna have to have detention with uh, one of the if anyone answers incorrectly. Uh oh, it's, yeah, oh, seventy five percent. Oh goodness. Yeah, reach out to us directly. We'll have to have a live webinar with you guys. Another one separately. You're gonna have to sit for an other hour with us during lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the correct answer was uh, false. So. With ZDNA versus VPN, you've got a health check. So you're going to you've got the continuous health check on the client um, to allow access to the resources rather than VPN, which you just connect and then you're you're on. So um, some unique differences. Leaderboard, see what's going on. Harry Wombat, uh, Neil and Alan. All right, we'll jump into the next question. What is the biggest security risk of a traditional VPN? All right, let's have a look at uh, what the answer was. Oh, sorry, let's have a look at the answer. Our correct answer was B. Uh, we got 65% of uh, everyone there. All Good right, job. we'll jump on to the next question. Leaderboard first. I want to see where, where Wombat is. Oh, leaderboard. <laughs> I want to see where Wombat, Wombat is. Oh, he's... oh drop to third. <laughs> Go, Alan. <laughs> Go. Alan's coming. All right, up. let's kick off to the, uh, the next one. Only by five points, by the way, so make sure you get in there, guys. What? What are the three greatest benefits of ZTNA? Uh, oh, that's, so we've got, uh, there's three of them. So. All right, hopefully we got some answers to that one. That, uh, let's have a look at the correct answer was scalability works anywhere, uh, the sent device health compliance, and then the application micro segmentation. It's getting hard, ladies and gentlemen, it's getting hard. So, uh, let's have a look at uh, where we're everyone. So everyone, uh, it was uh, A and B, uh, sorry, A and C, and we had some for F, so ooh, it's, uh, yeah, partial points here. So we've got uh, <laughs> Harry Wombat back up in front. So, and Alan, Kane, Chris, close by. All right, let's go to the last question. Go with the Wombat. When should you not use ZTNA? And uh, this is a, uh, we're going to, uh, there's a problem with this question and we might just have to uh, create another one uh, or redo this one again. The, uh, let me just uh, bring up the leaderboard. That's all right, Matt. Some technical difficulties. You can leave everything to an algorithm at the last second. It's uh, Murphy's Law. Yeah. Uh, right now, we got Harry Wombat, though. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> Harry, if you win this, if this uh, win this one, Mr. or Miss Wombat, you're going to have to reach us to us somehow so we can we can see who you are. Uh, maybe maybe um, if you give me a, a direct call or something, and, and we'll, uh, we'll figure out a way to authenticate you somehow in order to see if you win. But either way, Alan A. also has a chance. Kane H., Christy, Neil T., and Richard 
let's see, there are five runner-up prizes for the $20 as well. So if you are two, three, four, five, and six on the leaderboard, you'll also get some juicy prizes. So, you know, you will be a winner there. Make sure you try to get up there if you're if you're close to those kind of slots, uh, you know, if, if you can. Um, Either way, uh, uh, let's let's see what we got uh, going here. Uh, I hope the results found the round yep. four uh, there. Cause the uh, the last question should have been when the gateways deployed to Hyper V. The Hyper V was missing from the uh, the question there. So, so we're we're basing the results of the quiz based on the four questions. So probably four that board so we'll, is uh, yeah. All right, slightly let's, out. Let's have um, a look. So we'll uh, have to fix that up. Um, but look. Harry Wombat, Alan Kane up there. Um, so we will. Uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, and, uh, those, we'll have a look. We'll go back and look at the the data. Um, but yeah, Harry Wombat, if you can uh, reach out to us and uh, uh, let us know who you are, and we'll, uh, we'll um, make sure the prize and which which prize you get is the the correct one and comes to you. Awesome, awesome. I feel awesome. like we, we might end up with a I'm Spartacus moment here. Everybody's going to claim that they're Harry Wombat. So that's going to be fun to, to authenticate. I'm going to leave that to you guys. Thank you, thank you. Uh, no worries, Yasha. We'll, we'll get on top of that. We'll have to do a sleuth and a private investigation. Uh, Mr. or Miss Harry Wombat, you're going to have to, um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find out some way, uh, some way to quiz you at, at the very end of it. But either way, look, we'll look at the data. We'll try to find out what's what's going on and who it was. Maybe, maybe we'll, we'll have a much more, like, we'll get you with an IP address or something. I feel like a hacker. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, thank you very much for hosting. Uh, that especially trivia, Matt. If you got good news or good feedback about that, we'd love to hear it. You know, it's the first time we've done a kind of a, a trivia type thing on stream like this. You uh, usually there's a lot of factors to account for. Uh, but right up next, we do have the lucky draw. All right, the lucky draw, uh, the big uh, wheel spin in order to get some. Uh, oh, that, that's that's a, that's a good idea. Yeah, maybe maybe you or you'll screenshot your screen with Harry Wombat as the winner if you still got it up there. You know, I uh, just got a, a word uh, from marketing in order to try to authenticate you properly. But don't worry, we'll reach out uh, to to you as well. Um, cool, cool, cool. So uh, next up, uh, let's let's change the presenter uh, back to me. And we will just get my screen up and going. Those are the prizes, of course. If we switch over, that was quiz time. We've got a lucky draw prize now, okay? Everyone who is attending right now, make sure you get your, your keyboards ready in order to see who wins an Apple Watch, okay? You, you have to claim it though. We'll give you 15 seconds in order to claim it um, or else if you if you don't claim it, we won't be able to, to have it up. Uh, to, to, we have to move on to the next person. Now, just to triple check, Yasha, Mr. Goodman, can you see my screen? Can you see the lucky draw uh, will spin oh, right now? We can there? see the spin. Yeah, we can see the spin. I'm getting around. Dizzy. And Yes, it's happening. Awesome. It's happening. You can see all your names there, guys. Thank you very much for that confirmation. We're going to spin that uh, the prize. Apple Watch Series 3 in one, two, three. Let's see who's coming up. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Could it be? Here we go. Here we go. Who is it? Oh, uh, that's great. Go G Georgie, G Georgie S, make sure you, you shout out to the chat somewhere, somewhere right now. Oh, there we go. A woohoo, a woohoo from, and a, and a thanks. We've got our winner for an Apple Watch, Apple Watch today. Thank you very much, Good ladies job. and gentlemen. That's, Good job, Gorgie. That's amazing. Yes. Yes, two, two, uh, two big winners right here. I'm so glad. We'll contact you. Okay, so don't worry, Gorgi. Uh, you, you'll see it right there on the screen. We've got a we've got a big, big old screenshot of who you are. So uh, you know, uh, we'll contact you via your email address. If any of the email of the address uh, or the details are wrong, uh, you know, make sure uh, that you correct it quick because you got an Apple Watch hanging by a thread. Uh, okay, okay, that, that that that's good. I'm so happy. I feel like Santa, and it's you know, it's Christmas as well, yeah. over mind you, and it's already 20. lots of prizes everywhere. Well, yeah, and I'll also, I'll also give a, a tentative congratulation to Phil Delarue because he claims he's Harry Wombat. So if that's true, congratulations, Phil, on winning the Apple Airpo AirPods as well. Yeah. And I've uh, just done the analysis from eliminating question five because it was just unfair. It was all wrong. So it was Harry Wombat, Alan A, Kane uh, was one, two, and three. So, um, And then uh, Chris T, Neil T, Richard C, and G1 going down. So... We'll reach out to you and uh, definitely Harry Wombat needs, all of the Harry Wombats need to reach out to us and we'll choose the right one. Um, but yeah, leave it over to you guys um, to uh, wrap it up. 
No, no, awesome, awesome. Thanks so much, uh, Matt. Thanks so much, Yasha, and thanks so much, uh, every single person for joining us here today. It seems like we have about six minutes left, so can we answer one more question, Yasha, just before we move on? We'll get some information out there, still in ZTNA. Right, while yeah, we absolutely. Have the time. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Uh, we have one question from Tony, uh, um, just, just to finish off, and he says, can uh, the SSO be passed further to the application that is shared via ZTNA? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I've, I, I did mention before, I'm going to repeat it again. A lot of what I said was slides and what I, what I was talking about, and we're going to be sharing the slide deck with everybody in this webinar. But please feel free to reach out to your local engineer. So anybody that's in Queensland or WA, that engineer would be me. And we're more than happy to run a demo and show you everything we've discussed in a live environment. I do have an environment where the single sign-on is passed onto an application behind it. So if anybody wants to see this in person, if anybody wants to trial it, reach out to your Sophos rep, to your blue chip reps, and to us engineers, and we're more than willing. We're very eager to show you how ZTNA works. Awesome. No, awesome, thanks, Yasha. Look, that just about finishes all of the uh, questions for today. I'm glad we were able to address the last one. Uh, if anyone else wants to uh, start coming towards the uh, signing up to the next webinar where we introduce Sophos switches next week at the same time, Thursday, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. We've got the exact same prizes as well for any of those Apple junkies out there, any of those Apple fanboys and fangirls. Uh, we've, we're going to be doing some live unboxings and another quiz just like that as well. So I'm really excited. Make sure you sign up for the next one. It will be inside of our thank you email. Thank you every single person for joining here today i think that's a wrap up we've got two winners and you know some runner ups and stuff i'm so glad i'm so glad make sure you enjoy your lunch ladies and gentlemen it is currently 11:56 a.m on a thursday uh, i'm so excited to end the week uh, aren't you yasha thanks everybody have a great Thank day you, great end of the week cheers cheers